everybody, Sam Straits here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to yet another locomotive review. This time, I think for the first time ever actually, I'm going to be looking at an electric locomotive and it's this, the Class 71 by Hornby. And I'd seen these on a couple of different channels, um, Barry Davis did a fantastic video on how good these are, so that got me interested. And also Mike's Movies made a couple of videos with this Class 71, although I think his was the DJ Models version, which actually looks a bit more detailed than this. But no, this is the Hornby one, and I got this from Rails of Sheffield for quite a good price, I think. I think I paid £89.50 for this, so yes, yeah, probably not a bargain per se, but uh, certainly not a bad price considering, you know, you can pick them up for £130 and that still a fair price so yeah quite happy with that this is the BR blue one as you can tell although they do different liveries BR green at the very least and they might they may do more I'm not 100% sure on that but yeah let's take a look at this there in the Hornby class 71 a very lovely early electric locomotive okay let's take a look and the box for these is definitely a lot shorter than what we used to which I suppose does make sense because the 71s aren't massive things and they certainly don't have tenders or anything like that but uh, let me show you the end of the box anyway this is our 337 for BR Blue Class 71 and then you've got the running number there which is 71012. Okay well the back of the box is always very impressive from Hornby so I'll flip this over and let you have a look. So first of all you can see RA6 which stands for Root Availability and I'm not sure whether the fact that these were electric would have uh, made any impact on the route availability because you wouldn't have thought there would be that many electrified routes in 1958 but I'm no expert. And uh, over there in the middle lots of information on the 71 which is interesting so if you want to pause it and read it uh, do feel free to and then finally my favorite feature of the Hornby packaging it's the little diagram here in the corner which shows the uh, the Hornby diagrams from 2014 they're dated uh, which presumably would have been used to help make the model okay let's get this one out then and see what it's like now the box is very very tight on this for some reason I don't know why in fact I'll take it out this way because it snags the other way Oh, you've got to be, you've got to put a lot of <laughs> pressure onto that actually, but that's okay, it means that nothing's going to be sliding out while, while it's in transit, so that's perfect. Okay, right, the block of ice, I must say, is really, really heavy, uh, noticeably, especially for a loco this size. Very impressive already. Okay, so we've got the operating and maintenance instructions for the Class 71, and I'll show you inside very briefly. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it shows you all the usual stuff, fitting detail, lubrication, but it also quite interestingly shows you that there is a couple of switches on the bottom of the loco. Uh, one of them there is for tail lights, because if you wanted to have double headers or something like that, you don't need tail lights on all the units. And uh, also, you've got the option here to use the pantograph or the track, so I think we'll be using three rail mode today, but you could use the pantograph, which uh, obviously must work. So that's very interesting, and we'll have a look at the pantograph once we get this out. Okay, uh, let's take the sleeve off then. There we go, <laughs> that came off a bit easier. And I'm just going to flip it upside down because there is a little detail back on here. And uh, I'm not an expert on what these are, but I think these are what you put on near the buffer beam area. And uh, I think according to the instructions, you can just slide those in and uh, they've got lots of detail on there. Now, unlike Helgen, Hornby are giving the option not to have these on, which I think is very, very good because, of course, the Helgen ones uh, foul the mechanism up and, uh, you know, they derail on points and things. So that's very good. And then on the other end, you've got this sort of card with different stickers. I believe those are probably head code or something like that, which you can put on the ends of the locos. Uh, so I'm going to leave those well alone until I sort of decide which I'm going to put on there. But for now then, let's get this out and let's see what it's like, shall we? Very heavy, as I say. Oops, sorry about the noise. <laughs> it's not ASMR or anything, but yes, it is a bit obnoxious, that noise, isn't it? Right, here it is, and wow. It really is just fantastic, isn't it? So, so heavy, and I'm sorry I can't convey how, how heavy these are. But yeah, as you can tell, the detail is beautiful. And I'm gonna show you the pantograph now, actually. Um, now, it said on the instructions that you twist it and it comes up, but uh, I found that that doesn't really work, so I just ease it out of its clip like that. But uh, yeah, that's a very intricate thing, isn't it? I'll try and get a better shot of this later on. But uh, yeah, I bet that's where a lot of the money goes. So I'm gonna put that back down. Little bit on the flimsy side, but it's going to be, isn't it? I don't know how you'd make something like that robust. And those are the switches on the bottom then, if I turn it the other way. 
you can see the switches there. Uh, so yeah, you've got the, the one that switches off the tail lights, and I've got the tail lights on because I've only got the one. And then you've got the track or the pantograph, and yeah, this is set to track because of course, unfortunately, I don't have any overhead lines. But uh, yes, there it is, the 71. Very, very impressive. Uh, I like it, I like it. It's got a lot of character for an electric, hasn't it? So I'll review this up close in just a second, but for now then, here's a couple of shout outs and a little bit of history on the class. So here we go. So a quick hello to Shunting Steve, TGA Rail 15 and David's Trains. Thank you very much for your support and for getting in touch. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Introduced in 1958, the Class 71 was an early British electric locomotive used on the southern region of British Railways for mixed traffic. The class picked up power either from the third rail or by using the pantograph and the overhead lines as we've already talked about a little bit, uh, but the third rail was only really used where safe and of course the overhead wires had to be used in yards or busy areas where the railway staff or railway workers may have come into contact with the high voltage third rail which would of course be on the ground. The class was generally very reliable with acceleration that was claimed to be astonishing when compared to the likes of steamers and diesels and yeah apparently the inclines on certain uh, parts of the railway just didn't have any effect on them they would not slow down or anything like that so very impressive really especially for the 1950s. Although 24 units were produced in total only one survives in preservation although luckily it is still in running order which is lovely to hear really. Okay let's move on. So there is then Hornby's Class 71, and as a steam locomotive lover, I must say I love this, and I'll tell you why. Obviously, a lot of the steam locomotives back in the steam era were designed to be as attractive and as gorgeous looking as possible, so that they would literally attract passengers who might otherwise choose to go by car or bus or something like that. Um, they were purposely designed to be very, very stylish and modern and upmarket. And you can definitely see evidence of that with this. You know, it's the 1950s. Uh, it's got a very stylish, curvy design. It looks very futuristic almost. And then you've got this whole mystery of electricity being used to power it. You've got this pantograph, which is in pride of place, very much incorporated into the design in the middle here. You know, it's this magical device which is used to power the train. Uh, it's very impressive, isn't it? And as I say, yes, you've got this very interesting curvy design at each end, so that it really must have looked like something from the future back in the 1950s. And of course, that sort of intrigue is what would have drawn passengers to the railways still. And I think that's really interesting. Uh, another thing I like, of course, as a steam lover, is the fact that, I don't know if you can see, it has got spoked wheels, which is quite unusual. I can't really recall any other um, diesels or electrics even that have got spoked wheels, but I assume some of the early ones probably did. Okay, let's take a look at some of the detailing on this then. The paintwork, of course, is quite basic. It is sort of that basic BR blue, but you do get a lot of extras on the paintwork. So you've got things like the British Railways logo there on the side. Uh, you've got the running numbers next to the doors there, which are, of course, faultlessly applied, as they always tend to be. And all of the handrails and the doors are either painted or separately fitted. I think these handrails next to the doors look to me like they are separately fitted, or they're certainly very cleverly moulded. And they're all picked out in the white, of course. And another thing that catches my eye is the bogies. Of course, there's a lot of detail on there. Most of it is moulded, I would say. But then you've got these things here. I'm not sure what they are, but they're painted in white. I thought to start with that they might have been something to do with that third rail, but I wouldn't have thought it would be on the outside like that. So, yes, that's a bit of a mystery but I'm sure there are a lot of very clever experts that watch my stuff, I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they will uh, almost certainly be able to clear that up. As you can see, the cabs are also very nicely detailed. You've got separately fitted windscreen wipers there. And at this, at the front here is where I thought uh, probably you would be putting those head codes. And I think there might be lights behind there so that they light up. We'll have to see that when she runs. Inside the cab, you can see you have molded chairs. And I didn't really look too carefully to start with. But when I did, I was amazed to see that all of the gauges and dials and things actually had a printed detail on them. And not just, you know, a red lever here and there or, you know, a black painted steering wheel or whatever not a steering wheel obviously but yeah it's seriously seriously well done and for something that most people might not even notice I think that is just fantastic attention to detail and I think that is just really really amazing to be honest so yes massive points for that that is just brilliant 
Also, you have lights and such on the front. As you can see, there's little holes there for lights, which we'll see better, of course, once uh, she gets running. And also metal buffers. Uh, they are metal, and they are also sprung, which is absolutely fantastic. Okay, I did promise you I would give you a closer look at the pantograph, so here it is. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's white, which again is quite stylish. It probably didn't need to be white, but again, it's, it's all this sort of attracting passengers and trying to uh, make the railways look a bit more glamorous than they uh, necessarily are. So let's bring it up very carefully because I'm conscious it is a little bit uh, delicate but yeah there it is and that's the look of the loco uh, with the pantograph up which again must have looked so unusual and interesting back in the 1950s so I'm going to put that down because I, I'm a bit wary of it uh, while it's up in case I catch it or something, I'm sure I won't if I'm careful. But uh, yeah, that's it. As you can probably tell for yourself, there is a lot of detail on this, and it is a beautiful representation of the Class 71. As I say, there is a little bit of competition from the DJ Models version, and I've seen Mike's video of that, which is very good, by the way. I'll try and put a... well, I can put a little thing up in the top corner for it. Uh, I would say the detail is a little bit uh, better on the DJ version, but then again, it's a little bit more expensive. So, swings and roundabouts, I suppose. Okay, well, I'm going to stop yakking about the detail on this thing because as you can tell it is very lovely and we'll move on and have a look at the performance. Okay, so there she is then down onto the track ready for her to be tested and she's going to be coupling up to some passenger coaches based on what I said earlier um, because I think these do look quite nice with the uh, coaches. But anyway, let's give her a little bit of a test then. Of course, this model does have light, so I think I'll show you that first. So I'm just going to stick the camera on the track and give her a little bit of juice. And if I don't turn it up so much that she moves, you can see the lights actually turn on there. So uh, that's the, the white ones, so that's forwards. And then if I turn it off again and change direction, switch it back on, you'll get again with the red. Yep, there you have it. So, yep, yeah, good bright lights. Um, I do like to see bright lights, even though it isn't necessarily that realistic. I just, you know, it's nice to be able to detect the lights without a microscope or something like that. Okay, well, she's going to be running in third rail mode today then, because I think the uh, the footbridge and maybe even the bookcase would take out the pantograph if I left that up. But uh, let's give her a little bit of a juice and see how she gets on. So let's try her at slow speeds. Bit of juice forwards. And that's it, she's sort of kicked in. As you can see, it's not terribly smooth at slow speeds. Um, although I must say, overall, she's a brilliant performer. But the slow speed performance isn't absolutely marvellous. But it's certainly not bad. But it, what it is, is quiet. It's absolutely silent in every way. And then wouldn't she get up to sort of that speed, I would say. Let's go forwards. About that speed, it becomes very smooth indeed, which is exactly what you want. And it's got all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickups, so you don't have any issues on express points or anything like that. And I don't think mine has ever even stuttered, let alone stopped on points. So, absolutely fantastic. Okay, let's couple her to the coaches then. Here we go. Nice and steadily does it. Right, <laughs> I heard a little bit of jolting there, but I think we're okay. I think that was just the coupling hooks falling into place. So, is she in focus there? Yes, I think so, just about. Just going to double check the coupling. Yes, a perfect coupling. So, yes, the couplings don't droop on this, which is very good news. <laughs> right, here we go then. Forward she goes. It's not many coaches, it's only five, so for an all-wheel loco that is, sorry, an all-wheel drive loco that is as heavy as she is, it really isn't an issue at all. Oh, listen to that. All you can hear is the coaches. You can't hear the loco at all. Absolutely brilliant. And I suppose they would be quiet in real life too, so that's quite good. Now, alongside her, I am going to be running some other electrics, but I don't have too many of them, so these unfortunately are from quite a bit later on. But uh, once, we get, uh, once we get going with the running session, uh, the locos in the sidings are all from the 1950s, so uh, hopefully you'll have fun spotting those. So this one is actually a Lima one, but it's very good. This is a Class 87, pulling some tankers, as you can tell. And on the inner line, this is an 86, I believe, Class 86, with a variety of different uh, intercity coaches. So I hope you enjoy seeing those run, and uh, good luck with the train spotting in the sidings and things. I've got to be honest with you, this thing is so good. Just looking at it running, in fact, gives you a real impression of quality. It's definitely one of Hornby's better models, this. I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, but just something about it tells you that it's just not something that they've you know, run off the mill just because they had to. You know, this has really been carefully designed and very, very well executed. It's, it's fantastic. It really is. 
Oh, there we go, the 87. As you can tell, a bit noisier, not quite as smooth. But still a good runner, obviously. But next to uh, something like the 71, it's just not quite in the same league. And here's the 71 now. I just can't get over that very unusual shape. I love it. Hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting looking, isn't it? I really am fond of it already. <laughs> it's fab. Oh. <laughs> Got in the way a little bit, didn't you there, Mr. Swallow? Yeah, not a very nice shot now. Goodness sake. So let me know which of these three electrics you like the most. I suppose it might be a bit of a silly question. Well, it is for me, but obviously everybody's preferences are different. But I think you know which mine is. <laughs> Look at that. It really is quiet. I'm <laughs> I've just been sat right next to it while it's gone by, and I didn't hear a thing. I don't think I've ever had a loco that has been literally silent so that you can hear the coaches more than you can hear the motor. That's unbelievable to me. I don't know, perhaps I'm getting too overexcited. Here are my ratings then for the Hornby Class 71. Detail 10 out of 10. It was going to be a 9 out of 10 on the detail, but then when I saw the cab, I just uh, had to give it a 10 on that. Performance, 9 out of 10. She's beautiful, she's quiet, she's powerful. She isn't absolutely fantastic at slow speeds. It does sort of mean that I can't give a 10 out of 10, but still fantastic performance. Character, 10 out of 10. The fact that so much thought obviously went into the design of the class and also Hornby's representation is just fantastic. So 10 out of 10 there. Build quality, 9 out of 10. Generally it is fairly good. Nothing's broken off on it. A couple of the detailing parts, the uh, pantograph especially, are a little bit flimsy. So I can't give it full marks, but it's pretty close. 9 out of 10. The value on these isn't absolutely fantastic. I got mine at a bit of a sale price and even then it was still quite pricey. But still not terrible, so I've given it 7 out of 10. So overall, 9.27 out of 10, a very, very good score. And into the ranking she goes at 8th, just above the Webb Coal Tank and below the J15. So yes, a fantastic model. It is a little bit pricey and obviously we wish it wasn't, but I can't help um, thinking that it wouldn't be as good as this if it was only £70 or whatever. And so for once I am actually glad they, uh, they spent the extra money and uh, made it absolutely brilliant. But with this one you can see where your money's gone. Sometimes you can't, but uh, with this, you know, I think the value is reasonable at the very least. Okay then folks, well I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, thoroughly enjoyed that one. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as this when I ordered it, and uh, it was a pleasant surprise when it came, I can tell you that. So uh, now I've just got to find a few excuses to run it more often, and uh, I will do my best for that. But that's it, so thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like or even a comment, and also feel free to check out the Facebook or Twitter pages. Also, if you've got any loco trouble and you'd like to send one to me for a service, that's absolutely fine. I do offer the, uh, the service now, and it's only £10 to send in a loco, so hopefully that is pretty good value. If you're interested in that, just look me up on eBay or send me an email to samstrains at outlook.com and I will get in touch with you. But uh, for now, that's it. Thank you for watching. I will show you the Wall of Fame. I'll show you the other end, actually. Hang on. There we go. I have got about five photos still waiting to go up, I think. But other than that, uh, just about up to date. Again, it's the same email address, so if you'd like to have something of yours put up on the wall, please feel free to email it to me at, uh, yeah, once again, samstrains.outlook.com, and I'd be very glad to put that up for you. But for now, folks, thank you once again for watching. Lovely to have your company, and of course, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, but that's it for me for the time being, so thanks for watching once again, and uh, all being well, I'll see you for the next video. All right, cheers, everybody.